all right, whatever, we'll be this Spark guy or whatever. But all the dumpy comics about Spark online kill me. They are so funny. So I am 100% completely glad that I'm on Team Instinct because Spark is a doofy, doofy dude in all the comics. And there's one that this happy and sad part made me think about where uh, I don't remember their names, the other team leaders, uh, because I'm not on their team. Um, or Candela. Candela's red. Uh, Candela was like, hey, what's a, a word for sad and mad? And then, um, I don't know Blue Team's name, but she's like, because she's the smart, intelligent one, she's like, melancholy, distraught, and she's throwing out all these crazy cool words. And then it goes this spark, and he just straight face says, smad. And ah, uh, fucking love it. Ah, uh, seriously, go look up. Pokemon Go Spark comics, and it's fucking hilarious. I love Spark. He's such a derp. Kills me. That tomboy leader. Who's the tomboy leader? Monica? Am I missing something? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, Sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. Oh, that's adorable. Make a nice happy rainbow. Siri, that's unexpectedly poetic. What, oh, she's gonna get white eyes. Aha! I know this. Huh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Yeah. Thanks, Big Papa. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Oh my gosh, it's a, oh my gosh, it's a book. She actually spent time on this one. She didn't write it in the morning. In Pokemon Go, I just at home. Oh. Pokemon usually have a really good tomboy team leader. Yeah, they're both actually pretty dope. Because fight girl. <laughs> Bottles. Bottles, I pop off my, I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. What does that have to do with Rose? It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes bottles to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up, and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I fancily pull them from the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all up the floor. They were supposed to be my, for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. That is a dark poem. Okay, so at a high level, what I'm taking from this poem is she's keeping up her happy appearances and she's giving like happy appearance. She's giving her energy and her happiness to like brighten her friends worlds and lights and she's sacrificing herself in the process of doing it because she's taking the piece of her own light putting it in a bottle and giving it away which in but near the end here it's she's running out of that light and oh this is a dark poem and her friends are expecting this of her and she can't give it to them and now she's essentially running on empty. Oh, that was a dark poem, Sayori. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. 
I didn't tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever. Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect anything like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really touching my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to be you being cheerful. That's the point of her freaking poem. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Ah, thanks. I'd forgotten her voice, by the way. I feel like... I feel like it was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sorry, is always a bit of a habit getting obsessed with something before dropping it no t more than a week. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in your eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Guys! This, uh... Like, it's supposed to be Screamtober and this is not Scream. Alright, Monica. Hi again, Big Papa! How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. <laughs> Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Whoa. Excuse me. Your heart. Happy thoughts. Oh, that poem? That was brutal, right? Uwu-tober. Nice, Voltius. <laughs> Too many bees. <laughs> Uwu-tober. This is tough a second time through. Uh, oh, this is me. I almost said this in her voice. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Why don't you share what you... Oh. Why don't you share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? I thought I scored higher with Yuri. On this one, too. Maybe not. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? It wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Ah, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm? Well, er. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities. I almost kicked over a thing. That you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like you two are really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? Because I just really drew a picture of a cow. There's no poem there. Haha, <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has a kind of gent gentle feel to it. Did you read her latest poem? It's pretty dark. I can tell she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Yep. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? Yep. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. I don't like how that one starts out. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless... Uh, <laughs> endless. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, raging waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Was she doing math homework at the same time? Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. That would that sounds interesting. I want to know what a pizza crust sounds like. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. What? Look at this space. Save me. 
Yum, pizza crust. <laughs> Um, I did not expect this from uh, a Monica. What's this load me? Is this an indication to check that, um, that thing my buddy told me about, which I accidentally closed apparently? He said open the, um, the game directory. Local files. Browse local files. I still only have 12 files. Wait a minute. There's five girls, right? Monica, Yuri, Sayori, Natsuki. No, there's four. Okay. Yeah, th I I still don't see any changes, so I don't I don't know what that's about. Whatever. I'll keep it open. I accidentally closed it. So. I this is not clickable, by the way. That load me thing. I I thought that would be a, a clickable thing. Which wouldn't make sense because it's on a piece of paper. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Uh -huh. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mode of a poem. It's almost like magic. The, the way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking a po what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. But putting it that way might not even... Not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Oh, here's the writing tip. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game! You never know when you might change your mind. Is the game self-aware? Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this even a tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening! <laughs> that was clever. The developer put the little. Remember to save your stuff. Hold on a minute. Let me make sure I didn't miss. Save me, load me. Oh! Yeah, because it started with save me and then load me. Okay, I get it. Sounds like sounds like to me she hates humanity. Uh, the Monica would. Sounded like that she was just getting upset with all the noise around her like to me what I took from Monica's poem is like she's so talented in everything she does that everyone wants her to be there or whatever so they all want her to be part of their club she's expected to get all these amazing grades she's apparently ath super athletic so like she's just expected of these really high expectations from everyone so I, I can hear that as like static in your life of people just constantly not letting you just live you know you're just expected to live at this level that's that's my brain what's for trash it change it mail it upgrade it are you are you speaking uh, daft punk to us yuri hi let's see what you've written for today yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face she did that last time do you, you like it? Big Papa, this one might even be better than yesterday's. Yes! I've improved! Level up! How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did, you did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try to give it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. <laughs> even her hands appear sweaty. Knees weak, arms heavy, ready for some mom spaghetti? I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I don't know 
I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. That's nice. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. Besides, people just laugh at me. Aw. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Hmm. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. Does she not have close friends? I guess she is quiet and reserved. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. Aw, I feel honored. Ah! She has one about- Damn, another book! They're getting longer. The Raccoon. Alright. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering- or scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. This more sounds like a, just like a journal writing. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. Why am I saying raccoon? I say raccoon. Man, I'm weird on stream. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its face and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. Do each of the characters have a different music score? That's kind of clever. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend, I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotion onto the newly satisfied animal. Whoa. Nice. There he goes. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread. And I feed myself again. Wait. Did I misread something? Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. But she was talking about feeding the raccoon. The raccoon has taken to follow me. You can say that it's gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry. Is she the raccoon? Okay. I'm skimming this again because... So she's talking about a raccoon. She's talking about feeding a raccoon some bread, right? But at the end here, she talks about feeding herself after she cuts the bread. So if we go ahead and replace her references to raccoon everywhere and replace it with her, what's it mean? Uh, that one doesn't make sense. All right, she gives herself a piece of bread, subconscious well of the consequences. Essentially saying the more you feed herself the more you'll want the more that's gonna come back right the enticing beauty in my cutting knife was the symptom the bread my hu my hungry curiosity she herself has an urge the moon increments its phase and blah 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 uh her raccoon friend shows up so she she's her urge shows up again uh, she slices the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon, she becomes excited. She, she's getting excited from cutting the bread. Or maybe she's projecting her emotions. Okay. And now the raccoon, or 
that her urge is always around her now. The raccoon becomes... Uh, the urge is happening more and more. 